All right, negative values. What do we do with them? So this is, first of all, a great example of something that you cannot really make sense of yourself. Um, that's why we always say domain knowledge is very, very, very important in data science. So this is a great example of something that you would go and ask your clients if you're working for a client that knows more about the data, or this is something that you would go and ask to your domain expert that's in your company. Uh, so we do not just randomly go and delete it. There are a couple of things that we need to do first. So first I want to take a closer look at them. So these are all the values that are less than um, zero. Uh, first, what I print here is how many of them there are. So there are only 7,000 of them. So I, I want to check this because I want to see if I just delete them from the data set, how much um, harm it's going to do to me. But I, as far as I remember, we have more than 7 million data points. So 7,000 and 7 million data points is not a big loss. So I can even just delete them at this point. But I also want to see, uh, I want to show you some other checks that I do. Uh, okay, this is not very important, but you know, we just want to see the, the distribution of like what values they have. And okay, so what I do is I just go ahead and see uh, try to see if there is anything very obvious that I can understand about these uh, values that are negative. So the first thing that gets my attention is the payment type. So obviously this is just the first five columns, but you know, they're all threes and fours. So I'm like, okay, let's check the payment type to see if it's always threes and fours. And it actually is. So apparently the, the most common uh, payment type that we have when we have a negative value is three and four and we have like a, a very little amount of twos and ones that th these might even be you know a mistake uh, a mi miss uh, ent entering the data point basically so I want to go back and see what these payment types mean and it is no charge and dispute so I can understand what dispute might mean here. You know, maybe the client was like, I'm not paying this, or they charged the client's credit card a little bit too much, so they had to pay it back. Um, no charge, I'm not really sure what this means. I can, you know, try to come up with something like a d definition or explanation myself. It probably will not be correct, but basically what, I, what we understand here is that when there's a negative value, it's mostly caused by something going wrong in the payment process or, you know, in general, if something went wrong with the trip. Um, that's, that's good to know that, you know, there are not many faulty data points. That's good for us to know. So basically um, what I decided at this point that I can just delete these negative values. I don't really need them. There are not there are not a lot of them and they're obviously caused by something uh, you know that makes sense but it's not going to help us in our uh, prediction to have these values it's probably only going to confuse the model to have negative values so i've decided at this point to just delete them but the last thing that i want to do is to look at the trip distance when the total amount is zero and yeah we see that there you know there are some trips that are very long as long as 20 kilometers or 20 miles or maybe more but yeah most of them is actually zero so maybe you know someone jumped in the cab and then you know after a while they decided not to take it I don't know I really don't know what might have happened there but what I know is I can safely get rid of the negative values at this point okay so I looked into what I can do about the negative values but then I realized I, I'm not actually looking at the values that are zero because those are also a bit weird. Why would someone pay zero dollars for a cab? Uh, and I, I actually don't want to have them in my data set. I don't really want zero values because then, you know, if that happens because someone gets in the cab and decides to not go anywhere, uh, that information is not going to be very useful for me. It's only going to be confusing for the model. So I just want to see why these values are there. So quickly, I want to look at how many zero values there are, and it's only 1,400-ish. Again, that's not a big uh, this, that's not a big amount. I can easily, you know, say goodbye to them. I'm not going to be very sad. Uh, again, you know, what I did last time, I'm looking at payment time, a payment type. Uh, let's see, it's mostly ones and zeros, which I think was credit card and cash. So, okay, that makes sense, you know, probably 
yeah, it's it's not like a dispute or anything. I mean, it makes sense that it, 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 they uh, show it as credit card or cash because there is nothing going wrong. But I think the the thing that's going to give us the most information now is going to be trip distance. So let me check that. Yeah, as I expected, it's mostly zeros. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have how many? 1,414 of them and nearly all of them are just zero. Let me, let me, let me check that it's correct by using value counts. Yeah, so zero miles is uh, basically 1,200 of it is zero miles. Uh, and then we have like very, very little miles. Uh, I guess, yeah, this is like they went one mile and then there was a dispute. Was it was for dispute? Yeah, something went wrong there. Or yeah, so the, basically zero total amount, total amount is zero. It just means that the trip didn't work out. I can easily also say goodbye to the zero values. But yeah, I will be doing that on the uh, data cleaning part. But yeah, it's good to decide that we can get rid of them. Okay, the last thing I want to do in data exploration is look at the very high total amount values. So for that, I am going to plot it again to see the very high values. Yeah, so this is what we had. There's, this is probably just one data point. This is another data point and a couple here. It's just 600,000. I can't even imagine that, that being real. So that's definitely an outlier. Um, but to make sure, I want to see uh, how many data points there are that are higher than 500. And turns out it's just 56 of them. In total, we have 7 million data points. So no one can convince me that these values are just not um, mistypes or I don't know, some sort of messing up of the system. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm basically at this point, what I'm looking for is like a safe cutout point where it makes sense to say, okay, I do not accept any value higher than this. Um, so 500, you know, still pretty high. So I want to see if I can go lower. So let's see how many points that is higher than 300, 300 points, a little bit more than 300 po data points, which is still, you know, still all right. Um, what about hundred? Okay. So there are more than 10,000 data points that have a total amount that's higher than a hundred. So yeah, that, that would be a lot of data points to lose, to be honest. And also hundred dollars seems like a, you know, decent amount of money. Like it, it's a, it's a normal amount of money that you will pay. Uh, I guess if you're going very far, if you're going to the airport from the other side of the city or something. Um, what about 200? Okay. So I feel like this is a good compromise in this data set, a little bit more than a thousand data points. It's not a big loss. And I think it will make more sense to uh, limit the period or the limit the range that we're trying to predict. Uh, yeah, I think I think that will make sense. So um, just to make sure, I want to see the mean uh, amount that people are paying for the taxi. So like out of all the data points, okay, it's around uh, sixteen dollars. So that's not that's not very high, anyways. So we, we're going to try to predict the. Um, amount people pay in a region on a day and some, of course, some other uh, uh, input will be considered. But I think $200 is a fair limit for our total amount. So yeah, I will be cleaning it from that point and I'll show you how I do that in the next video. But before we do that, I would really encourage you to go ahead and try to do the cleaning yourself. And then you can watch the video about the data cleaning uh, part. And yeah, I'll, I'll show you how I approach it.